Hello everyone and welcome back to another video which I'm gonna hopefully do every single week or try to. This is aimed at exposing different bits of content from uh, places like Twitter that uh, people either don't have access to or can't see, maybe don't know about, and showing sure off some cool Gundam stuff. So we're gonna start here. This is by user uh, Wild Exam, and they've done a high grade M1 Astray in tricolors or traditional Gundam colors. Honestly, it looks real nice. I'm not so sure about the uh, the shield with it being just gray and the backpack being in just gray, but uh, the just seeing the M1 Astray in uh, in classic colors is actually really nice here. I really do enjoy that. So that was cool to see. We've got somebody who's uh, doing modifications to, I think this is the, the Toad's Ritter? I'm, I don't know whether I've pronounced that right. I keep getting called out about it, but then uh, they've made more modifications to it down the page. Honestly, I skipped <laughs> for a moment because I thought I'd, uh, I'd got another a tab of it, but clearly I didn't. So unfortunately, we're going to have to move on here to uh, VX Sirius. And this is a... Uh, a modification of the the violent I'm not sure whether this is done or not but we've got these huge shields on the side here we've got new parts on what looks like the head unit the chest the shoulders uh, a bit of the uh, waist section it looks like maybe the back of the arms as well there's just a lot of new armor on this I actually can't wait to see how this looks painted up uh, there's a lot of stuff on the the rear skirts here I'm not sure I I think those sections here are from a uh, a Jagan variant. I could be wrong. It reminds me of something from Unicorn. I can't remember the name of it. It's a specific variant. If anybody can uh, name this part, or at least correct me in the comments section, please do. But yeah, I really like customs, especially when they add on to already existing suits, and you get to see how interesting it's going to look, especially before the paint and then after. Hopefully we'll get an after shot of that. And then here from uh, Gunpla Photography and uh, by modeler Yik Z Fong, hope I pronounced that right, we've got the uh, the Stargazer here. Now the best thing that I like about this is not just the fact of the uh, the glowing sections of the frame being highlighted really well. I don't know whether that's done via stickers or not. But it's the uh, the back ring, the way that it's painted up, with this kind of pearlescent paint. It looks so nice. So nice. Just catches the light in just the right way. Unless it's not painted in pearlescent, and it might just be me. I'm not entirely sure. There's, there's a little bit of uh, what looks like paint speckles there. Or you know, some sort of texture going on. Not sure whether that's intentional or not, but I really do love the way that this came out. It looks really nice. So again, if you want to see that, uh, Gunpla Photography, I'm going to be showing off quite a lot from. They uh, they have the link on the Twitter as well, but yeah, all the, uh, the links you'll see here anyway on page because I want I want this content to be seen by these people. Or rather, for these people, so they can get extra exposure. We've got another one. This is a uh, a mixture of the Astray and the uh, the Freedom. And this is by Poo Lucky Thirteen. And uh, I like how sharp this looks. It's really nice in terms of the uh, the painting and the extra bits, because uh, these legs look like they're from the Astray. The torso is as well, a bit of the head. I'm, I'm just picking this up now because this is the really the uh, the first time I've looked like really close in at the details because the overall silhouette and everything just looked like a standard freedom but in really nice colors. The uh, the blues are a lot deeper here. I just I love the uh, the breakup of details, especially on uh, these smaller sections where we've got these kind of like white markings. I love the way that people can do that, where they, they take simple sections of the kit and then break them up with decals like that, because I don't know why, it just looks so appealing to me. And then of course we've got this shot of the uh, the catapult, 
it's a bit high up on uh, on OBS here, so I can't show you all of it. But it's on a catapult that's lit up from underneath. That looks fantastic as well, and the front-facing shot of it looks so good. I actually really like the Astray now in um, in Freedom's colors. It'd be interesting to kind of do this as a build on Gundam Breaker Three. Have the uh, the Freedom's wings on the back of an Astray, and then just do the Astray up with the the uh, the Strike Freedom's side uh, builder parts that you can get. But yeah, this is by uh, at Poo Lucky Thirteen again. Just to uh, just to mention that again, show it off because I really, really do enjoy that. The uh, the photos are really good. The, then we've got uh, this was the one from before that I was on about the the one that I, I thought I'd skipped. This is by uh, at Muko Far, and this is a uh, sort of like a Sin Andrew Stein version of the uh, the Toads writer, and uh, this looks really really nice. I. The reason why I say that is because, like, I'm used to the, the normal look of the Pale Rider. But I actually like this, this also sort of, like, monotone colour scheme that the, uh, the St. Andrew Stein had. And just seeing these parts in, in, in a different colour looks, looks real nice to me. Also, like, this St. Andrew Stein's shield there as well. Did he have other shots of it? Ah, here we go. So we've got other shots of it. One with the Gundam head in the back there. There it is. So there's the other one. Now front and center. That one looks like it's a mixture of maybe the Hino or something. Because of the legs. I, I could be totally wrong there. But then we've got a... Uh, oh, we got a, a good action shot there. Where did those sub-arms come from? I'm actually wondering where these sub arms came from, and those look like the the double zetas, large beam sabers. Do I see those in any of the other shots? No, the sub arms are. Oh, actually, no, 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 no. The sh the shoulders. But the they're, they're so well camouflaged. That it's it's hard to tell actually where they are. That's that's really awesome. That I really do like that build. And then of course over here we've got uh, from Sun. We have Overkill, which is the uh, the heavy arms, the master grade heavy arms, and what they've done, as you can see here, is just go absolutely crazy. So, it's the the endless waltz version of the heavy arms, or the uh, I think is it the glory of losers. It's the the Katoki version of the heavy arms, not the TV version. So it's got the extra uh, rocket pods or missile pods on the the side of the shoulders. It's got the uh, the missile pods on the inside as well as the outside of the legs and uh, it's got a lot of uh, beam Vulcans or yeah beam Gatlings sorry not Vulcans in wing the the reference is beam Vul uh, Gatlings anyway and uh, I think this must have stolen some of the uh, the cert like the spur beam Gatlings from the serpents that were in the uh, the end of the endless waltz because Look at this, it's got 4, 8, 12, 16 of them. So that's that's ridiculous overkill right there. But again, that looks good just for the sake of uh, sheer ridiculousness. And then we've got uh, this fantastic shot of the uh, the crossbow, and it looks like the real grade. It's the Red Ha Wayu Paranda, I think that is the pronunciation. I'm sorry if I butcher this. Again, by uh, Gunpla Photography, or provided by, and this is a, a fantastic shot of the uh, crossbow, and I just had to show this off, mainly because it's a really nice action shot of the, uh, like, the dirt coming up here, and then you've got the, uh, the cloak sort of obscuring the rest of it. Absolutely love the way that this uses a little bit of uh, depth of field as well to obscure everything in the background, so you're just solely focused on the crossbow. And with the crossbow being one of my favourite design of uh, Gundams, it just looks so nice. Then, of course, we've got a, uh, another custom. This is by uh, Nanashi San 99. And this is uh, fitting with the Year of the Ox, apparently. But the, uh, the neat thing I like about this is the fact that they've mixed a load of different parts and even created their own sword, which we'll see. 
uh, at one point, and then they've given this sort of like metallic brushing, and you can tell it's got like a sort of ox horn thing going on here. But the uh, the blade reminds me of something you'd see on like IBO or whatever. But they've clearly mixed multiple different parts and kits, and uh, this guy's a, a big bulky boy, but he's he's really cool. I like that the uh, the rear skirt here. I think it was from an IBO kit. I could be wrong. Some of these look like uh, recognizable parts, like the arms, like from the the uh, master gun. And this looks like from one of the grunts from IBO. And then we had uh, parts of the leg, which looked like one of the uh, Gallahorn suits from IBO. Let's see here. Okay, so we got a lot of the Master Gundam. Let's, let's see if there's any... There we go. Yeah, various parts from Iron Blooded Orphans, uh, the Zigok, Zaku, and the Master Gundam. So is that chain mine on the shoulder? It looks like it. Um... Trying to make out just any more of this, but it's it's really hard to the way that they've uh, incorporated some of these parts together. It does the finished piece does look real nice? And I just realised the legs are from Funsaiki. Like most of the legs are from Funsaiki. You can tell when it's uh, at certain angles here because of the uh, the giant thighs. So that'll be from the Master Gundam and Funsaiki kit. And then we've got this next one by uh, Kanpokipus, I think that is, on Twitter. And this this reminds me a lot of the uh, the cataphracts from uh, Aldenoa Zero, mainly because of the uh, the color scheme. I don't know whether they were going for that or not. But this is the uh, Gundam Hajiro Boshi, I think. It mixes the uh, the Astaroth origin and Hajima Boshi, and we get this nice looking. IBO suit that I, I love the color scheme, even if it is based on uh, Aldino Zero. You know the uh, the training units from that. Love these shots. The uh, the extra add-on parts here. I'm not sure I recognize them for the shoulders, and that looks like the uh, the back booster from the uh, or the uh, additional parts from the Tetrium Gundam from Rerise. But then we've got other shots here with different poses. I think the, some of the shoulder armor as well, like standard there at the moment, is. Uh, I could be wrong, but it looks like a graze. Like a uh, armor from a graze. And then we've got the, uh, the Hajiroboshi shield there. I do like the katana edition. It looks real nice. And then we got another shot here. I don't know what this part is attached to the arm here. The arm kind of looks like it's from uh, the low section. Anyway, looks like it's from the uh, full city rebake. Oh, I see. It's. Uh, it's got like a drill on the side of its arm or something. That is really interesting considering it looks like it's using part of a leg or whatever for the uh, the armor there. It's, it's really weird. I do like that though. I like it when people get creative. And then here we go from uh, at Meteor ZGMFX 20A, which I think is the Freedoms. Uh, the Freedoms number we got the uh the new gundam so this is the one that's on show in japan at the moment the uh f double zero i think it's f double zero looking at it here anyway and uh, this is what looks like i think the master grade of it but i just love the uh, the way that this is painted up like all the panel lines and everything look really nice and clean and crisp and there's there's like some faint subtle shading all over it, especially on like the back of the shield here. There's just so much work gone into this. It's gonna be even crazier if I find out in like one of the other photos that it lights up or whatever. You know, if that if if somebody turned around to me now and said, Look, there's a little uh, 
there's a little wire going in the back and it lights off. I'd be uh, absolutely fascinated with this because I like the idea of the uh, the running lights on either side lighting up. Kind of like uh, you see on the real thing. I love how clean and well done this looks. When people make kits look this good, it gets people into one thing to do gunplay. Because you, you look at something like this and you go, oh, if, if, if it comes out looking like that, it's fantastic. You know, I want to get that. And of course, when you're a complete beginner builder, it never comes out like this. It takes a lot of time and effort. And uh, I appreciate the people that put the time and effort in to make it look that good. Here from uh, Zexus Triple Zero, we've got some uh, funny retweeted Among Us style uh, seed stuff. I think it's specifically the uh, the strikes by the look of it. But as you can see, we've got all the imposters, or rather, all the uh, the crewmates being uh, different variants of the strike like we've got the ale the uh, strike rouge ale and then we've got what looks like the uh, the full package the uh, the otori pack I think it is I can't remember whether it's otori or owashi pack I could be wrong with that one probably am we got with no pack at all down here and then we've got the Strike Noir here as well. So it's, it's pretty fun to see stuff like that, especially considering Among Us is, at the moment, anyway, a, uh, a really big thing and everybody's enjoying it. It'd be actually interesting to see if somebody were actually able to play in-game with them. Then we've got here the Gunpla Hermit. Just uh, bringing to attention a third-party kit that's being released of the uh, Judge Gundam. I've never heard of this before, but as a third party kit this looks real nice and I like the overall design. Kind of reminds me a little bit of, um, like certain parts anyway, like the head reminds me a little bit of like an ashtray. And then going down here in these arm sections remind me a little bit of uh, Wing Zero Custom from the Endless Waltz. Just because of the, the clear sections and them being a little bit bulkier like sleeves. And then... Down here we've got these legs that kind of remind me a little bit of uh, the new Gundams, the way that they're shaped and the detailing on them. And then we've got a uh, shot of the weapon there, which looks so nice. And the uh, the wings, which look like they have, or the backpack, sorry, that look like they have some crazy articulation. And then we've got some, uh, some what looks like box art. That's crazy that I don't see many people talking about third party kits anymore. Um... That definitely looks like a really nice third party kit. I think the only other one that I've seen that looks real nice is the uh, the Dragon Momoko Death Scythe Held TV version. Here's another one that I liked primarily just because of the uh, the way it was done, the creativity. And this is by uh, At Kazian, by the look of it. Just up top here. This is for Age's 10th anniversary. Has it really been that long already? This is a, uh, a custom clanch, and it's done up in the uh, the style of build fighters by the look of it. And what they've done is they've turned it into a bird, and uh, when it transforms, <laughs> it turns into like a, bu a budgie by the look of it or something. It's uh, it's so cute. I like the way you can see the arm and the legs sticking out the back here and the head. Then again, the clanch, when it was transformed, really didn't hide most of its uh, its robot form. All it was really was the uh, the gun attaching to the chest part. But yeah, I love stuff like that where people get really creative and turn the uh, the kit from something like this into this. So good. Then we've got. Uh, Bianco 339-00879 and this is what looks like the is this going to be like the X here or the double O Gundam? Looks like I'm, I'm going to be wrong here. It looks like the X here with um, it's X here 7 sword I think because of the uh, the amount of swords all over it. 1, 2, 3, 4 five six i'm assuming there's a seventh one hidden around here somewhere that i can't see 
I like this one primarily because of the uh, the glowing base on it, not just because of the, the way that the kit is done, because the kit looks real nice. Not so uh, blue here, it's looking, at least on my end, looking a little bit more of a, uh, like a, a purpley blue with some lightish purpley blue highlights on it, almost like a lilac colour. Uh, instead of the uh, the deep blue that some kits use. But I really like the way that it's broken up, so it looks like there's a lot of colour separation and a lot of different panels here. They've chosen what looks like not to go chrome on the uh, the GN sword, which is surprising, because most people like the, uh, the chrome blade, just because of how reflective it is and how uh, cool it looks. But yeah, I definitely like the work that was done onto the, what looks like a custom base that lights up and... Uh, keeps it in this position and then we've got some uh, behind the scenes a little bit on the uh, the base and how it was done I love it when people put the time and effort in to do custom stuff like this I don't know where I'd get started with anything like this apart from like getting some plot plates and trying it but yeah that looks the final product looks so nice and then of course we've got some more stuff here from uh, what looks like Rion Rion 0616 and this is some more age stuff here it looks like bolting on uh, different parts to the age kits but then it's all bolted onto one kit by the looks of it to make it look like it's fully armored up but the best part about this is the uh, the custom Gao Gai Ga here done with the same parts we got like drills on the uh the lower portions of the knees here and then as we go up you get these different parts this looks like a uh a waist section from an ashtray or at least the front section just this middle part here it's it's using a lot of different pieces from different suits to uh to come up with this design but it looks so nice i like the way they've used metallics as well I'm, I'm just l trying to pick apart different details here we've got like the uh, the build burnings effects here on the back of it by the look of it and what looks like the uh, what was it the star booster the um, the one from just standard build divers it was the uh, the second core unit that they have that has this uh, crazy star effect going on either way it looks really really nice I think we've got like age FX funnels here or C funnels a lot of detail has gone into this I again I absolutely love it when people get really creative you see this kind of stuff in uh, Gundam Breaker 3 as well online but this is uh, this is taking it to the next level because obviously with kit form you can do whatever you want Then here we've got uh, Mocha Mona 12 here, and the reason why I like this is primarily because not just of the uh, the clean paint job, but because it's from Thunderbolt, or at least they've made it from Thunderbolt by uh, mixing and matching certain mints. Like this looks like a Jim Sniper 2, I think, with um, some Thunderbolt shields here and backpack. It looks like it's a mix between uh, either one of the Thunderbolt gyms or the Thunderbolt ground Gundam by the looks of it anyway but I love the uh, again the subtle shading or airbrushing to it and I love that the green that they've used here like they've got a dark green to break up certain areas and then a much lighter kind of olive drab green and then they're picking out small details with like the thruster bells all over it with, with what looks like gold and then we get to see more of this on the backpack where the, the inside of the thruster bells are all gold here and then we've got some uh, what looks like light uh, amount of decals because we can't see too many of them they're really not plastered all over the place like some Katoki kits where they're done all over every single surface and then there's what looks like a beam spray gun on the uh, the lower thigh here. 
and then buy uh, Ace Pilot Gunpla. This was nice because I didn't know there was a conversion kit or a, a yeah a resin conversion kit for the uh, the Shining Gundam. So this is very similar to the resin kit that was just released for the God Gundam. I think it was last year where they had an inner frame that's made out of Lego. But I love how this looks. Again, real sharp. I like the what looks almost like reactive armor on the uh, the Shining Finger gloves here. Or the uh, the arm shields. I like the way we've got some slight curvature to the uh, the shoulders to make them not as blocky. And then we've got all these almost strike looking legs, which was the same with the uh, the guard Gundam if I remember rightly. And then we've got again that sort of reactive looking armor on the uh, the exterior armor for the thrusters on the legs. And then this this looks like Epion's beam saber because of how big it is or something very similar and then of course we've got it stood next to the uh, the resin kit of the god gundam which looks equally as good they're both finished off really nicely here absolutely love the uh the paint job that's been done there's some bits where i, I kind of question it though like i'm just looking now just very quickly um the only thing that i question here is the the gold sections on certain bits like on the tops of the ankle armor here and on the shoulders i think if it's if it's keeping with the shining you know of having the gold in the similar areas i can kind of understand that it's just that with the uh the god gundam i'm used to these areas that i've highlighted being black but um and i, I realize you guys can't see the, the ankle armor on this that much but it's over here where my mouse is and uh, around here but yeah apart from that it's just me nitpicking really these are really nice looking models and uh yeah i didn't even know there was a resin kit for the shining and then we've got black 5777 5 and this uh, this user i think is the one that i've been watching for a while they've been doing a custom high new with a lot of detail in it as you can see there's massive amounts of uh, custom work done here to put more panels and detail into absolutely everything and uh, I've been watching this kit come together over time there is absolutely so much effort involved in this like go and check out the page um, like with all the other stuff I've left a load of links in this for you to deliberately check out at your own discretion but this one in particular there is that much effort in this custom i don't think i've ever seen a custom with that much effort in it before and then we've got some uh, some more gyms here to go with it i think this is a gym command type i think and then we've got a sniper in the background and they're both sort of back to back here again lots of detail all over the place lots of custom detail which just makes it that much better than just you know your standard paint job that's been done with an airbrush absolutely fantastic i gotta go back and look at this high new again when when you look at the work in progress shots for this and it shows you close-ups without it being painted the amount of time and effort that's gone into this and making all these details is oh, it's crazy i wish they'd put a back shot up because the uh, the behind view of it with all the thrusters and everything and the underside of the feet I've seen that in a completely different image and it looks amazing. Then here from, uh, hope I don't budge this, uh, Kime619, this is a, uh, what looks like an amalgamation of the, uh, the original Astroth, like the Origin one, it's, I like the, the different parts of the Astroth Gundam strapped onto each other here because it looks really nice. The Astroth is one of those weird ones where part of like half of the kit was slightly bigger than the uh, the other half to give it exaggerated features. And uh, it was something where whenever I saw the images of it, I always wanted one half of it to be mirrored. I've got this this kind of thing for like one half of the gun being different to the other it's really weird I, I just don't particularly like it too much on certain suits and the astroth was one where i looked at it and thought this looks weird shouldn't it be symmetrical and uh, this is kind of along those lines 
with the uh, the giant hands being put on either side. You've got this one on here, and then you've got the other one which is hanging off the the shoulder here as like sh extra shoulder armor. And then we've got all of its weapons combined into one giant axe thing by the look of it that looks absolutely crazy because you can see the uh, the sword here and the the uh, sheath that the other sword would go into which doubles up as a I think a blunt weapon and then you've got the I'm trying to look for where the original destruction knife is I think it's destruction knife um the original weapon that it, it held uh, when it was just the standard suit where it's a very long sword with a uh, almost like uh, this sort of tooth design running along the side of it. I really love how they've just turned this into an axe though and give it very bulky proportions for like the arms and the uh, the legs so it looks again like I said more symmetrical. There's a, a little bit of a close-up detail for you there. The head looks really cool as well. I don't know how much custom detailing they've done to that. It looks like they've done a little bit of a merge between the two. I could be wrong also love the way they've picked out all the pistons and everything else in gold because that makes it shine just that little bit more because you're able to uh, look at the areas of detail like that it just looks really nice and impressive and breaks up the overall sort of mass of white and blue and then this action shot that is using depth of field to pr primarily focus on the uh, the most destructive thing <laughs> that I, I think is in shot at this point right now. That's really, really nice. Plus you can see the extra arm in the background for when this thing has to lift the uh, the giant axe weapon up. And then you can just see that, that other extra arm there on the uh, the shoulder that I was on about before. But yeah, I really like that one. Another nice kit that's, uh, that's done up in a, a custom way to make it look better. This one by uh, Daisuke here or DT zero eight two two eight two two A, and uh, these are brilliant. These are some of the SDs uh, done in what looks like Master Grade form. Just let me uh, go back here. So you've got this comparison shot. I think this is uh, SD World. And down below we've got. It's cut off a little bit, but you've got each of the suits. We've got the Double O Gundam, the Strike Freedom, I think, and the uh, the Lupus. I think I could be wrong. It's it's either the Barbatos or the Barbatos Lupus. But they're, they're done in this uh, sort of Musha era style armor. And here we've got each individual one of them done up in the same armor, just at like Master Grade level. And. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how they've done this. <laughs> I really don't. I don't know where to start with these. Like the freedom, the the yeah, it's the standard freedom, not the strike. I just love all the uh, the extra details that have been added here in gold. I'm trying to make these out now. Some parts look like the the parts of say like with this bit here. It looks like it's off the God Gundam's chest. Um. Some of this bit looks like it might be custom. I don't know. The amount of time spent on this stuff is crazy. You've got the um, the big mace here on the uh, the Barbatos with its capes, which I assume are taken from other suits that have like these clear parts. This this like dragon looking head. I don't know where you'd get that from, but all these uh, additional parts on top make these way way better than just you know your average uh your average paint job on say like the uh, the original suits Th this goes beyond in terms of like doing so much custom work to it to make it look like the sd versions it, it's got me confused and in awe at the same time and then the last one we've got here is a uh, by gamma uh, gamamoto 11 and this is the uh, the damaged core Gundam. This is, I think, after the fight with the Gao um, in the flashback sequence that they have, where it's beaten up like crazy. But I like the the way that this side of the face is more damaged and exposing the interior, which is making it remind me of um, Unicorn with the Sananju 
in one of the er earlier episodes where they blow a hole in its face and you can see the the red sort of eye exposed through it. But yeah, I really love the artwork by uh, Yamamoto Eleven because they, they do some really, really good re-rise artwork. Or just Gundam artwork in general. So, yeah, it, loved everything that I'd, I'd covered here. There's so much of it. I hope you guys have enjoyed and found some new stuff, you know, that to go explore and have a look at and, in, you know, enjoy. So, I'll see you on the next one. Like I said, I'm hoping to do this weekly depending on how much content I get. And uh, if not, I'll just sort of collect weeks worth of uh, content and we'll go from there. Anyway, thank you very much guys. Remember to check out the creators and I shall see you in the next video. Bye!